Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. Well, we are out with the QB78 now that we got the bug buster all mounted up. But we do have to get a dovetail to pick a teeny rail adapter to give us some extra height, which means we're going to have to recite this gun in all over again once those parts come in. And the uh, original rings that came with the scope are actually Picatinny, so at least I don't have to buy another set of rings. These ones are a little on the short side. They are dovetails, but because where the bug buster has to be placed so you can see through the scope, it's kind of covering over my breech quite a bit. So it's kind of like, oh man. Anyways, I just freshly changed the bottles in this thing. I've been messing with this thing all morning. And um, so I've decided, you know what, we're going to set her up at 10 meters because that's usually the distance I shoot with this thing anyways because it's kind of like my little pest control hunter gun. Um, one of which, anyways, we got two now, the Diana as well. But uh, I figured, you know, we'll just set it in at 10 meters and then I get a choice, you know, run two bottles or run three. Um, but uh, anyway, so we do have the sunshade installed because the sun is in my eyeballs. And the sunshade actually does help a little bit. But I will say this, you will notice a bit of an impact difference between running the sunshade and not running the sunshade. I have no idea what's doing it other than the effect of the lighting, but it seems that it actually does change the POI just a little tiny bit. Anyways, well, let's go down range here and zoom in on our target. And uh, we're going to see how things go. Now, I know with my other Leaper scope that used to be on this gun, I had this thing shooting below dime size. And the little red spot on this target is actually below dime size. And I'm not quite getting that kind of grouping, but uh, the last target I shot, before I ran out of gas, things were going pretty good. So things might be a little whack now that we got full power restored again. So we may have to do some dialing here, but that's okay. We'll shoot two targets at least. Well, that's not that bad of an effect. We just got to dial her down a little. We'll start with... Uh, let's go three clicks down because we're only 10 meters. This thing is a quarter inch um, at 100 yards. Not that we're going to ever shoot that far with this gun, but lots of specs. Couple extra clicks. See, at 100 yards, each click is a quarter of an inch, but when you're at, you know, basically 11 yards or 10 meters, it's a lot more clicks. That's a pretty good one. Let's try two clicks to the right. I think we might have this thing dialed in pretty good. I gotta tell you guys, I really love these QB22 cal rifles. They're really nice. Yeah, that's doing pretty good. That's all right. Well, let's take another shot, see if everything's still gonna be good. Yeah, that's actually doing really, really well. Very impressed. Let's just go one more click to the right. I wanna try and get this as close to center as possible. Now on a normal bullseye, this is definitely going to be a really small grouping. Oh, we annihilated the bullseye. I think we do have to take that back to the left one. I think we were okay there. Okay, let's get another target. What do we got? I think we're out of those ones now. Oh no, we got a we got another one. I am so running out of targets again, guys. I I'm almost done my 200 targets for my last batch. I really got to get a lot more targets, and I love these animal targets. They are so cool. Uh, that's about a dime actually you know 
Let me zoom out. We got to show you this now. Check that out. That is that is really decent. That's definitely a dime. Easy a dime. That that's really impressive. I like that. Now we are running Predator Polymag, by the way, um, 16 grain, and these are the full long range, long rifle ones because they also have the uh, shorts as well. Focus camera, focus. The sun really hurts cameras. Um, but uh, the gun does like these things. And uh, this is actually my last tin of these ones. I'm going to have to order more. Because you only get 200 rounds of tin. So let's shoot another target here and see if things stay reasonably well for us. Not bad. Wicked. I think we can actually afford one click down. I hope. It's so nice. It's warming up really good out here now and much better for the CO2. Okay, maybe we shouldn't have moved anything or that was a flyer. I'm going to count that as a flyer because I know that wasn't me. I have come across the odd poly mag that it wasn't quite assembled we'll say correctly Let's put a couple more through another one that went up a little fly That's kind of a little weird there. Can't have that many flyers. Okay. So instead of trying to get a below dime size group, let's go to a regular target now and see how things go. So the target we're using now is basically the, the, the bullseye is about a nickel. So this is what we just finished shooting here. The first one was actually far better. I don't know, maybe we got a couple of bad pellets. And the wind is starting to pick up. Wonder bar. Now it's going to wreak a little havoc on us. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to do as best as we can. Uh, wind's coming up and that's a pain in the butt. That's actually pretty good. That scooted itself up. I'm going to move that down a couple notches.
Now we're getting there. Now we're, I think we're getting there good. Probably just had a few bum pellets by the looks of things. So I'll just tighten that ring back up, lock down the turret. Yeah, we're on. Nice. So we, it looks like we had a couple bung pellets. It happens. Oh yeah. All right, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. We're on. Woohoo! Well, given we got a couple of shots that went up on flyers for us, everything else is stabilized now, so we did have a couple of bunk pellets. I kind of figured it wasn't me the scope of the gun. <laughs> These pellets. So we definitely got, that's basically a, like a dime is going to cover that. Like that's like my pinky, right? Like, you know, so that's really small. So now the normal size of this outer ring is like a nickel. Right, so that's just barely below a dime. That's around a dime. I'm going to call that a dime, okay? Or slightly just a hairball under. So that, that's really good grouping. So we did have a few bung pellets. That can happen in any tin of pellets. We know this, right? So let's go over our results again. So this was our first one. We definitely had some, or no, it wasn't. Sorry, wrong one. So this was our first one. That is actually really good. That's about the same size group as what we just finished shooting. And then this one started to go a little creepy on us. So we did have a couple pellets that looks like were a little bit flyers. And then we had a couple shots that were definitely flyers up top. But we got her back in. And uh, we're definitely within that dime or slightly under. So grouping wise, awesome. The gun is back to normal. At least until we put that dovetail the Picatinny rail on and the Picatinny mounts again and then we got to recite again but that's okay so um, let me just put these targets down and we'll scurry over to the gun now the scope was I believe it was about a hundred and twenty nine dollars in tax and shipping which wasn't too bad that was pretty decent I got that from DL air guns by the way it's the only air gun company I found in Canada so far that carries Leaper stuff. And I've been dealing with DL gun for years and, you know, and, and I like their stuff, you know, and their prices are really good. Their selection is right awesome too. Um, I also deal with airgunsource.ca, been dealing with them for a long time as well. <coughs> if I remember correctly, they actually used to be the Peterborough Crossman place for parts and stuff. In which case, I've been dealing with them for a long time anyways so um, air gun source is actually where I'm going to be getting my adapter from though and uh, but uh, the scope is really nice it's a fixed six time zoom which is fine at 10 meters it's great at 20 meters it's still great um, I have no qualms either way you know it dials in really nice the uh, adjustable parallax on this or adjustable optical is actually fairly accurate because 10 meters is what I, I measured out, okay, to where the front of the muzzle is. And we're basically at 11 yards, which is 10 meters. So the parallax on this thing is fairly accurate, okay, which is very nice. Um, the sunshade does make it look cooler and does work really nice, okay. Now you can't pop your front cap on your lens cover. The same way you would into the groove track but there's enough of a space that you can leave the sunshade on and still pop your cap on but you're gonna have to just pull it right off when you want to use the scope and I've left the back cap off for now just because I'm out here messing and dialing and getting things tuned in right um, locking resetting turrets work great um, very nice um, and uh, so I'm gonna have to actually reset these so you know what, I'm going to teach you guys how to do that properly while we're on camera. So there is a method to the madness of this. You have to actually loosen off the ring, okay, for your locking ring. Hold the turret so it doesn't move, okay. Loosen the screw off a bit, pull up, get to the zero mark, 
hold your turret so it does not turn on you because otherwise you're going to be resetting things again. And you just want to snug these up just a little bit, not much. It doesn't take much. And then just, just lightly snug the locking ring again. You don't have to reef on these rings. And by the way, for the record, guys, because uh, I watch other channels too, like many of you, and uh, I'm not going to name the channel. I'll let you discover that on your own. But this person definitely knocked the leaper scopes really bad based on one scope. Um, and uh, that was kind of uncalled for, I think. When it comes to the optics on these scopes, they are outstanding, clarity, beautiful, sharp images. They're not what they're being made to be by this particular person. Also, they had said that these lockers were plastic. They are not plastic. They are metal. I even did the bike test because I thought, no, they can't be plastic. They've never been plastic that I remember. You know, they're quality built scopes. So, just for giggles, I actually did the bite test. Sure enough, they're metal. I was right. So, I think he should go back and do the bite test. But, um, you know, the Leaper scopes, you can get a defective scope, which is what I said on his channel. You probably got a defective scope because I've been using Leaper scopes, guys, for a long time. And I have never had problems with leaper scopes, okay? They have always been outstanding quality and workmanship, you know, and you're not breaking the bank either. I mean, this is way under 200 bucks. Um, it was $169.99 for my 3x12x40 adjustable optical hunter varmint scopes, which I have two of them identical, and both of them are now sitting on both my Diana Trail Scouts because I got one in each caliber just outstanding scopes okay now even the best of the scopes on the market these adjustments here for your parallax adjust they're never a hundred percent bang on I mean nobody does them that bang on okay now the other thing I want to point out too which was mentioned on this particular channel was he said that it sounded like a gritty sound okay when you're moving the optical back and forth here like this part at least he didn't crab a boat but this he did now that I think is attributed only to the simple fact that these things are so precisely and tightly machined and assembled, okay, that yeah, you're going to hear a bit of that scraping sound, but it's, it does happen. I actually checked them all and there's a little bit of it. And it's not nasty. It's a little bit of a sound, but that's because, you know, metal to metal contact in here too, because this is beveled down and it's a very tight snug fit like these scopes are waterproof they're shock proof they're fog proof you have to expect that metal is going to touch metal somewhere because you also have the seals in here as well on top of that so you may hear a bit of a scrapey sound you could hear that even on a three thousand dollar scope it is possible okay um, i've never had a three thousand dollar scope in my hand so i can't verify it but anything is possible right but definitely these are great scopes and they do come with rings this particular model does come with the sunshade which i thought well you know if this one does why don't they include it with the 3x12s you know because i got to go spend like you know about 45 dollars a piece on sunshades now on those other ones but i don't mind it's okay i've never used a sunshade on a scope before and uh i decided to, to put this one on and you know what when the sun is in your eyeballs like really at you these sunshades actually are very handy. They work awesome, so heh, it can stay. Um, I'll see what it's like in darker areas to shoot with too, because I want to try it in you know low lighting situations. And you know maybe it'll help too. Maybe it won't be a great idea to use your sunshade in dark areas. I'll have to find that out over time. But now our scope is all re-zeroed too. That's simple and easy. Um, there's programming involved, which is like you know very minor. You just hold them both down at the same time, and you can go through the different colors and pick one and read the manual okay um but very 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 nice scopes really like it so definitely worth the 129 in tax and shipping um any of the leaper scopes are worth what they're asking for at dnl air guns um or dl air guns sorry so it's dlairguns.com or dlairgun.com um link will be in the description below you know where to get it right so um i'm i'm pleased with the results it dialed in the gun like exceptionally well like that's that's an awesome grouping so just as good as the uh the 3x12s and this is a fixed six times zoom 
Now, when you're looking through this, too, as far as the zoom goes, I mean, it's, it's right up there. It's like that actually looks like it's probably about six times closer to me because, yeah, it's a pretty big picture, you know. Now, as far as eye relief goes, though, um, to get the full picture without any mucking around, um, where I'm at right now, we're going to say about three inches. We got about three inches of eye relief, roughly. So that's pretty good, and that's what the, the focus are out to, to go to my eye. Now, you do have to focus this area into your own eyeball with your own eyesight. You know, that's kind of a given. <coughs> Um, I highly recommend adjustable optical scopes, period, okay, because you can get rid of that parallax shift thing. So that's when you have a fixed parallax and you look through the scope and you're, okay, oh, okay, I'm on target, we're good. But if you bob your head around and stuff, you can see it looks like the, the crosshairs are moving, it looks like you're off target, so you'll automatically self-correct. Well, with an adjustable optical, you eliminate that problem completely, so... You look through it, you can bob your head all you, you want, and yeah, it doesn't appear as if it's moving at all. It's like rock solid steady, so that that's the way it should be. So now you can actually hit something with precision shooting. Um, otherwise, guys, when you're... I got a B on my strap for my gun. Ooh, I'm going to leave him alone. Um, but otherwise, when you have a fixed parallax, so non-adjustable... Um, you have to actually be at or further away from its fixed point, which could be 50 yards, 45 yards, 30 yards, 100 yards, 300 yards. And, and the, the larger the parallax number, the more frustration it's going to be for you. So unless you are actually shooting out to those yardages and beyond, yeah, you're going to have a lot of problems with being accurate with your gun on any good day. Okay, so adjustable definitely the way you can get precision with it because if you're going to hunt you need to make sure you're going to get that shot you know and if you're within that parallax area that say it's 50 yards you're shooting something at 35 or 40 yards well you still got to deal with parallax you could miss your your shot and that's a big thing you know that's that's huge so you know i definitely would go to this i have few other guns in the house that still need scopes. I have ones that have fixed parallax scopes on them. They are going to be ripped off as I can afford new scopes and all replaced with leaper scopes, all with adjustable optics on them as well. So um, anyways, as far as the red dot, green dot stuff goes here and all the other 34 colors afterwards, I'm really not that fussy on them. I kind of like the green myself and, you know, or the red's okay as well. It depends what you're aiming at. Um, but I mean, I don't really use it, but if I wanted to, I could, and I have tried it actually in, in a low light situation on my other scopes, and this is the same exact feature anyways. Um, and you know what? It actually is helpful as long as you're not too bright of a setting. You've got to kind of ding it down a little bit, you know? You don't want it like overly bright or it just blinds you, you know? So it is useful, and you do have 36 color choices. That's more than what you get on all the other competitor scopes. You know, they got like red or green or they have both okay so you either get a scope with red or a scope with green or a scope with both um but yeah anyways uh star readings guys solid solid i'm gonna say definitely a solid four and a half out of five i'm gonna go four and a half out of five um it would have been nice to have um dove or dovetail rings or a choice even. Buy this scope with Picatinny. Buy the same scope but with Dovetail. You know, that would have been nice. Um, but I guess we get what we get on that one. So that's kind of a little nitpicky. Nothing is perfect either, that's for sure. You know, that's, that's a given. Nothing is 100% dead on perfect. You know, so I can't really, you know, do much there. But I'm definitely impressed with this scope. And that definitely dialed this gun in extremely tight. So I'm very happy with that. That works great, wonderful. Um, I have had it out to about 25, 30 yards earlier today. Um, trying it as well, dials in really good. It's all I've no problems with it there either. Um, so it's, it's just a great scope. But like I said, the majority of my shooting is usually done at 11 yards or 10 meters. Um, you know, so that's kind of like where I decided to just completely set it up and that's where I'm gonna leave it. So, you know. Uh, unless I really want to do something, you know, challenging with the gun. Because we did do the 50-yard challenge. 
Um, I may do a challenge. Well, it was actually a 73 yard challenge. You're right. Um, so, but we did get to 50 yards. Okay, we got 50, but we got to modify the scope mounts and get different mounts to be able to repitch the scope to get more elevation out of it. Um, we'll revisit that this summer. And we may try some kind of crazy stunt like that with this gun too. Um, we'll see what happens, but that'll be a summer thing. It's fall now, and we're not expecting too much more really hot temperatures out. Like today's like 18. We got some 19s and 20s coming up in the next uh, week to two weeks as well, which is going to be still nice considering the time of year. It is September, um, you know, and then winter's going to be blasting us soon. But, um, yep, definitely... Uh, I, I give this a great thumbs up. So like I said, check the description below for the link to buy this scope. But you know what I'm going to do instead of specific to this? I'm going to just do the whole Leapers page for DL. So you can take a look at all the scopes that they sell. And also see what's in, in stock left. Because when they run out of stock on something, they actually list out of stock. So if it doesn't say out of stock, they got it, you can buy it. So there you go. Anyways, thanks again so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. We had a lot of fun. I got really super impressed, and I'm stoked. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to be getting on with the rest of my day now. I've got a few things to do, but um, including ordering more probably make predators for this thing. And I have a bee i got to get rid of without getting stung. Um, he's sitting on the strap of my, my gun there, so it's kind of like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Can you see him in there? Oh, one of my fingers. That's nasty. Okay, we got bee season starting over here. Maybe I can zoom in on that bee. Maybe you can see him. He's just a little annoyer. And I got to get him off there. So anyways, I'm out of here in case I do get stung. Thanks for watching. See ya.